How the hell did I get here? About to be drowned by a scissor-wielding shampoo fiend? Good question. It was a Saturday in late October, and I was hoping against hope that the phone would ring. It had been six weeks since I left my agency to hang out a shingle of my own, and it was starting to look like my old boss might have been right. We're the only game in town, kid. You'll be back. I hadn't had a single case yet, and if I didn't get one soon, I might have to close up shop and drown my sorrows in the bottle of wine I'd been saving to celebrate my first closed case. Liz Torres, P.I. Johan Busch. Uh, client? I have a case for you. A new case. Let me give you the scoop. Johan Busch was a hairstylist who had inherited a diamond necklace. He dropped it off for an appraisal on Tuesday at De Silva Jewelers. Hi, I'm looking for someone to appraise some jewelry. It's a rush job. But since then, he'd heard some rumors about the jeweler and hired me to make sure she was on the up and up, discreetly. It was admittedly novel. PI work is mostly, here's a camera, go catch my lousy cheating spouse in the act. But I wasn't about to look a gift case in the mouth. Maya De Silva, I'm Liz Torres. We spoke on the phone. The surprises kept coming. Not only was the jeweler gorgeous, but she was wearing my client's necklace. Thanks for seeing me on such short notice. You said it was urgent. So, what's the story? Who says I have one? Anyone who needs an urgent jewelry appraisal on a Saturday has a story. Maybe I just have some jewelry. Cut to the chase. Let's say I have a necklace, a lot like the one you're wearing. What could you tell me about it? Well, what could you tell me about its history? Say I don't know anything. Without my tools, not much. You would need to bring it by the shop on Monday. What if I left it here? Well, then I would bring it by the shop on Monday. How would I know it'd be safe? I don't typically hold on to client pieces in my home, Miss Torres. So it wouldn't be safe? I didn't say that. I understand. Uh, can I use your bathroom? It's upstairs. One more thing. Where did you get that necklace? It was a gift. Good luck, Gumshoe. Something didn't add up. I hated to do it, but I swallowed my pride and made one more call. Claire, can I run something by you? Sure thing, kid. So... You finally got a case. Yeah, but it's weird. If you were scamming a hairdresser, you wouldn't then ask him to cut your hair unless it was part of the scam, right? Well, I wouldn't scam a hairdresser at all. Bigger fish to fry and all that. Yeah. Thanks. That leaves... Johan. We're closed. Johan, I talked to the jeweler. She's legit. Oh yeah? What about the necklace? Is she keeping it safe? How's her security? Oh, it's definitely safe. Because it's hers. What are you talking about? She's a client of yours. She came in here Wednesday. The day after you supposedly dropped off your necklace. So what? She can't throw some business my way, too. But it was a gift for her birthday on Tuesday. You saw her wear it, and you wanted it. Fine. Very clever. 
I hired you to get the skinny on her security setup. Now you're an accessory. And you're fired. We done here? You won't get away with this. You aren't going anywhere. Gumshoe. Cut to the chase. No one scams a hairdresser. Of course I was. So, what happened? So I filled her in. So in your first solo case, you almost committed grand larceny and you were nearly drowned in a sink? <laughs> well, that's one for the record books. <laughs> it certainly was. Just not for my bank book. But that's life for a private eye in the big city. <laughs>